station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, this is station. I'm ready for the event. Houston ACR, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Houston ACR. How do you hear me? Houston ACR, this is Station. I have you loud and clear. Please stand by for opening remarks. Hello, Station. I am Dr. Vladivkovich. And I'm Joanna Polonay. And we are from the Neural Systems Group and Center for Space Medicine Research at Massachusetts General Hospital and Harvard Medical School. On behalf of our entire research team, Dr. Strangman, Zhang, Stankovic, Almadi, Karanakaran, Gong, and White, we send our greetings from Boston, Massachusetts. And we're joined here today by students and teachers from Harvard Kent Elementary and Warren Prescott School who have prepared some very interesting questions for you. So without further ado, here's our first question. Hi, my name is Aizen, and my question is, how does the temperature vary? Is it hot or is it cold in space? Well, the temperature varies dramatically in space. Uh, when we're working on space station, for example, out on a spacewalk, when we are um, in a region where we're feeling the sun's rays um, in a, over the sunny part of the Earth, the temperatures can be as high as 250 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're very lucky to have spacesuits on, but we can actually feel that warmth through the spacesuits. Uh, likewise, on the dark side, so when we can't see the sun, um, temperatures are very cold, the opposite, minus 250 degrees Fahrenheit. And then, of course, once you get out into deep space, um, you get very close to absolute cold. Hi, my name is Maria. My question is, what are the major defense mechanisms that keep the space station safe from space junk, asteroids, or anything else that might harm or impact the station? Thank you. Thank you, Maria. There are two main ways that we are protected from space debris. Uh, one is the shielding on space station. So um, the more exposed parts of space station are made a little bit stronger to protect us in case any debris actually does hit space station. Uh, we also have a large team on the ground who keeps track of all the space debris and space junk that's floating around. And if they see any uh, larger pieces of, de of debris that might hit us, then we actually get a warning from them, so we are able to move Space Station out of the way. Hi, my name is Rachel. My question is, how do you use a computer on the Space Station? Isn't there no Wi-Fi? We use computers on Space Station pretty similar to how you would use them on the ground, uh, but instead of sitting in a chair, we just kind of float in front of them with our feet tucked under a handrail, kind of like I am right now. Uh, we also have pretty good Wi-Fi for being in space. We are able to connect to the internet, uh, we can make phone calls, and we can actually even video chat with friends and family on the ground. Hi, my name is Kevin, and my question is, can the space station fall, and what would you do if that started to happen? We are actually always falling on space station. Um, we are always slowly descending back towards Earth, pulled in by Earth's gravity. Um, so periodically, we have to do what's called a reboost, where we use thrusters on the Russian segment to propel space station back up and reboost our um, altitude to a higher altitude. Hi, my name is August. How do you get supplies from Earth if you run out of food and water?
we get supplies from peri from cargo vehicles that come up every couple months. Uh, we get both um, cargo vehicles on the U.S. side as well as on the Russian side, and they bring us um, they bring us food, they bring us water. Um, sometimes they bring us treats, and they always bring us lots of science. Hi, my name is Hong Yu. My question is, where does the air you breathe come from? Most of the air we breathe is actually recycled. So we have the technology on board to remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere as well as generate oxygen. We also replenish that atmosphere from time to time um, with air brought up from the ground. Hi, my name is Andrew. My question is, how long does it take to get to the space station? That depends on which vehicle you launch on. For example, for myself, um, I launched on the Russian Soyuz vehicle, and it took us about three and a half hours to get to space station. So about the same amount of time that it takes to fly across the United States, really fast. Um, the SpaceX Dragon vehicle usually takes a little longer, um, and that's just using different um, different schemes for uh, how we do the rendezvous with space station. Um, but they usually take um, anywhere from 8, 9, 10 hours to upwards of 30 hours to rendezvous. Hi, my name is David. Uh, my question is, on the International Space Station, I heard that you cannot eat regular food like down here on Earth. What do you eat instead? That's a great question and one of my favorites. I actually have some of the food that we eat here. Um, our meals come in a couple different ways. Um, one is these green packets of food that you just pop in the oven and heat up. Pretty easy. The other main kind of food we have is rehydratable meals. For these, you just add water. We have a lot of tortillas, which we love. And then, of course, all sorts of different kinds of drinks, which all come in um, bags like this one I have here. This is some water. Hey, my question is, do you like your job and what do you do when you're done working? I love my job. Every day is different. It's always a really fun mix of science and maintenance activities on space station. And after I'm done working, I have gotten really into photography up here. Of course, we have beautiful views of Earth from Space Station. I also like to hang out with my crewmates, and I read a lot. Hi, my name is Rita, and my question is, is there an age requirement to be an astronaut? There is actually no age requirement to be an astronaut. Um, astronauts are usually selected at an average age from their late 20s um, all the way up into their 40s. And then the average age for astronauts is 34, but no age requirement. Hi, my name is Jocelyn, and my question is, what did you do before you became an astronaut? Before I became an astronaut, I was working as an ocean engineer at a place called Woods Hole Oceanographic Research Institution. Um, I was responsible there for designing and building and operating underwater robots and research submersibles used to explore the deepest parts of the ocean. Hi, my name is Vivian, and my question is, how do you shower or bathe on the space station? It's a great question. We don't really get to shower on space station um, like you would shower or bathe on Earth, but we are able to um, rinse ourselves off with water and we actually have towels that have some soap in them, so we're able to use that in our shower as well. Um, but basically, it, it's a process that takes a while where you rub water on your body and then towel it off and do that a couple times. <laughs> Hi, my name is Bronte, and my question is, what happens to your garbage from the International Space Station?
Well, like I mentioned earlier, we have cargo vehicles that bring us all sorts of goodies from Earth to space station. Um, some of those vehicles also take all of our trash back down where it burns up in the atmosphere. Uh, when we have one of those vehicles on board, we will slowly load it with um, all the trash that we generate on board. And then at some point, we will release that vehicle where it will go into orbit around the Earth for a couple days before it burns up in the atmosphere. Hi, my name is Demisha, and my question is, when you go to space, what does it feel like leaving and coming back? Well, heading up to space was amazing. Um, we do all of this training and all of this preparation. So the procedures that we're running and everything that we're seeing on our computer screens and on the panels in our spacecraft is very familiar. Uh, but what we haven't been able to train is the feeling of sitting on a rocket and feeling rocket engines light underneath you. Um, and that is just an amazing feeling when you feel those rocket engines light up and everything starts shaking and suddenly you know that today you are going to space. Um, I don't know what it's like to come back yet, but I'm looking forward to experiencing that in a couple months. Um, I know it can be difficult to um, get back down to Earth and learn how to live in gravity again. Everything feels very heavy. Your body feels heavy. Anything you pick up feels heavy. So I haven't experienced that yet, but I'm excited to see what it feels like. My name is Lena, and my question is, what was your favorite subject in school? I always liked a lot of different subjects in school. I really like science. Um, but I also really liked art and history. I did um, a lot of art when I was in school. And then I also played a lot of sports as well. Hi, I'm Luca from the Warren Prescott, and I wanted to know how much time do you spend training for your trip and how much of your training actually plays into your trip? We usually spend about one and a half years to two years training for a mission. And that includes everything from the training that we do on the spacecraft that will take us from Earth to space station, as well as training on all of the space station systems, on how to operate the robotic arm. We do spacewalk training, uh, and then we get training on some of the specific p payloads that will operate as well. Um, and I've been really impressed since I got up here um, with how much how well prepared we were for this mission. Um, I'll start working on a procedure and I don't, maybe don't really remember the specifics, but as, I, as I'm handling the equipment, it's all, all the training is coming back to me. Um, and the preparation we had just prepared us really well for the mission that we do up here. Hi, my name is Skyla. What happens to the body when you first go to space? The brain, the lungs, the heart. There are a lot of changes that happen to the human body over the course of a space mission. Uh, one of the most notice noticeable things right away is how all of the fluids shift in your body. So on gravity, um, gravity tends to hold the fluids in a certain distribution in your body. But once you get to space and you're in microgravity, um, that's no longer the case. And so fluid that was in your lower body, down in your legs, all kind of shifts around and a lot of it ends up um, in your head. So astronauts often feel very congested when they first get on board. Um, our faces are a little bit swollen and I definitely experienced that as well. Hi, my name is Angelique. And my question is, is it possible to grow plants in space? And if it is, what did you grow? It is possible to grow plants in space. Um, and this is a very timely question because we actually just harvested some tomato plants. Well, the leaves, we didn't actually get tomatoes from them. Uh, but we harvested the leaves from some baby tomato plants last week. Um, I got to do a lot of that work and it was amazing because I hadn't seen plants for about four months. Um, so they were the first living plants that I'd seen in a while and they were very beautiful. We don't have plants just growing out in the cabin, although I would love that. Um, right now, all of the plants we grow are related to research experiments. 
Hi, my name is Lazaro and I'm from the Warren Prescott School. I just have a question to ask you. Did you feel any motion sickness going into space or in space? I was definitely expecting to feel a little nauseous or motion sick when I first got to space, um, just based on previous experiences. But I also know that that doesn't always hold true and that was and fortunately, that was the case for me. Um, I never really felt sick, um, either when we first got to space and I was still in the Soyuz capsule or once I got on board space station. So I was pretty fortunate. I felt pretty good from the start and was um, able to just start moving around almost like normal. Hi, my name is Liam from the Warren Prescott. And my question is, did it feel weird to stay with other people for a long time in a compact area? Um, no, it actually doesn't feel weird. Uh, we are all very close up here, um, and we uh, we kind of turn into a family when we're on space station. You know, we celebrated the holidays together. We spend all of our time together and support each other like you would um, in a family. And so it's not weird. I think it'll actually be really interesting to get back to Earth and see just bi bigger groups of people and different people. Um, it'll be interesting after spending six months with the you know, mostly the same seven people. Hi, my name is Reed. I'm from the Warren Prescott School. What was the most memorable moment when you were in space? Uh, there's been so many memorable moments up here. Uh, one of the first moments, though, was when we first arrived to space station. So. I was in the Soyuz capsule. I'd only been in space for a couple hours. I'd seen the Earth. That was this amazing blue and white marble against the blackness of space, and I couldn't stop staring at it. Um, but then we were on our final approach to space station, and actually seeing space station out my window for the first time um, was incredibly memorable because um, you're looking, it's just black, and you're looking at space, and then all of a sudden um, I saw this solar array that I'd seen so many times in photos um, or in drawings, but never in real life. And it was just huge gold array just right in, my, just filling up my whole window. And then there was Space Station. Um, and again, it was so familiar from training, but to see it actually in real life um, in the darkness of space, this incredible thing that humans built uh, was just a really amazing moment that I will never forget. Hi, I'm Miles. How do you sleep in space? Is it comfortable? Is it difficult? Well, I think if you asked a bunch of astronauts this question, they would all have a little bit different of an answer. Some people sleep really well up here. Some people don't sleep very well. I'm fortunate that I sleep great up here. I love it. I think it's better than sleeping on Earth, actually. And the way we do it is um, we each have a sleeping bag that we use bungee cords to attach to the wall. And then we crawl in, zip ourselves up. There's holes for our arms to stick out. And then you just kind of relax and float inside the sleeping bag. Um, it's kind of like being completely underwater, so fully submerged and just relaxing every muscle in your body. Um, it reminds me very much of that. Hi, I'm Delisa from the Lauren Prescott School, and my question is, when you decided to become an astronaut, did you know the risks and consequences that came with the scary job? That's a great question, and yes, I did know the risks and consequences. Um, it's definitely something that we all have to consider, and of course, it's different when you're thinking about them just sort of in theory and when you're actually about to go uh, climb onto a rocket for your first space mission. Um, you think about it a little bit differently, but um, it's it's uh, just a really, it's one of the things that I love most about the job really is this weighing of risk and is it worth it and you know why do we go and for me the answer has always been yes um, and I think the work that we do up here and the work that the International Space Station program represents is very important. Um, and so for, for me, it has always been worth it for exploration. 
Hello, Station. I'm Dr. Alexandra Stankovich from the Neural Systems Group and the Center for Space Medicine Research at the Massachusetts General Hospital and Harvard Medical School. On behalf of our entire team and all of the students and teachers who took part in this wonderful downlink activity, we thank you for your time and responses. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes our event. Thank you to all participants. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.